I'm Sandy Lish. I am principal and co-founder of the Castle Group, and we have been in business for 25 years. I was lucky enough to know that I wanted to work in PR when I was graduating from UMass Amherst. I came to that realization only about a year before um, because of an internship, but I knew it's what I wanted to do. And so fast forward about six jobs, all of which I got through Help Wanted ads because I had no idea how to get a job and had no network or relationships. Um, I was working at an agency. It was what I loved, but wanted to have a little bit more control over what I did, who I did it with, and who I did it for. And since I'm a worrier, I would wait, lay awake at night worrying. I thought I may as well worry for myself. So we started the business. Wendy, who's my partner, we're 50-50 partners. Um, Wendy was my client. Wendy and I found ourselves with a business um, that we, you know, needed to figure out how to run. And we did that. And we are here 25 years later. You know, we found the best advice that we could. So, you know, we knew how to be practitioners of what we do professionally. We found a really good attorney and, you know, it's relationships, right? Everyone that we knew and we trusted, we asked. And so one led to another to another. So we found a good attorney, good HR counsel, good CPA and a good IT guy, all of whom are still with us in some capacity. So biggest challenges along the way, I mean, I think every day is a challenge, quite honestly, when you own your own business, you just don't, may not know what that challenge is going to be when you wake up in the morning and then you have to figure it out. Um, but, you know, the biggest challenge was starting a business and, you know, not really understanding the landscape and the networking piece and the relationship piece. Um, it's something we're extremely good at now. Um, and have obviously built over the 25 years, but that was a big challenge. Just thinking, you know, we're good at what we do and that will be enough. Being a woman in business, you have to, you have to try harder. You have to advocate harder. I think we're not as comfortable learning how to negotiate and talk about money um, as the guys. And so um, learning those things, learning how to be a little harder nose. And I would say the biggest challenge was the first time we faced a recession, we made decisions with our hearts. Not the best way to make a decision for your business. The second time we were in a recession, we realized what we had done poorly the first time and we overcorrected and didn't really think about in you know, a longer term, just sort of what do we need to do today? But both of those experiences really set us up for success when the pandemic hit because we had learned from our what we had done well and what we had done poorly and uh, and weathered it extremely well. I want me to tell you what I what I know now that I wish I knew then. Yeah. Um, I wish I had more confidence. And I wish I was more comfortable just being myself instead of trying to be, you know, what other people were, what other businesses were and not cared as much about what other people were doing. Um, but I think part of that comes with age, too. You know, you just get more comfortable. It's like what you see is what you get. This is it. And um, and having that com that comfort level and being yourself and that confidence, I think, go hand in hand. So I wish I had that. And then the biggest thing is networking. You know, I really thought that um, if I showed up in my black pantsuit, I was all set to walk into a room and it was very scary, but I but I would do it. And um, what I learned from uh, a mentor, Jim Collins, one day on the way back from an event was uh, he said to me, do you think sometimes you might want to like wear a color or, you know, a dress or something like you want to stand out when you're going somewhere, you want to meet people and be noticed and you just like blend it, you're blending in. And I'm sure it was difficult for him to say that to me, right? To tell a woman like how to dress differently, but it was really good advice and it's advice that I give now. Like if you're, you know, trying to represent your business and be seen and make an impression, you don't want to fade into the woodwork and you kind of got to fake it till you make it. One of the things that I wish that I knew when I was younger and I tell all of my employees and I tell my children repeatedly, and I stole this from Sheila Marcello, who was the CEO of care.com because she used to say it in a speech and it was the moral to a story she told. No one is thinking about you as much as you're thinking about you. 100% the best advice because we all go home and we agonize. I don't care if it's personal, professional, like, why did I say that? Or, oh my God, I can't believe I wore that. Or I should have said this, or, you know, the what ifs, the should haves. And we, we beat ourselves up for things that 
truly nobody gave a second thought to. So that's one side of that coin. The other side of that coin is self-advocacy, right? You may be doing a great job and you may be due for a promotion or you should be requesting more money from a client or what is it? And it's not that the folks that make those decisions wouldn't necessarily agree, but they just are not thinking about you as much as you're thinking about you. So there's two sides to that statement that I think are equally important. And probably everyone in my life is so sick of me saying it to them every time, you know, something happens, but there it's true. Nobody is thinking about you as much as you're thinking about you. So advocate for yourself and don't sweat the things that you think, you know, are a blunder or an issue. And Castle is my biggest success, right? It's been 25 years. We had no idea what we were doing when we started the company. I mean, I can't help but wake up every day and sort of pinch myself and say, we're like 25 years. How, like, how has this still happened? It still feels new. I still learn things every day. I think having a job that I love and working with people I love and doing meaningful work with clients that I feel are important is my biggest success. Truly is. In terms of individual projects and, you know, things that we've done, we launched, you know, Jeff Taylor, who was the monster.com founder, we launched his second business, which was a star studded, very complicated thing. We had Richard Dreyfus and Jane Seymour and, and that was pretty cool and fun. Castle itself and my partnership with Wendy are my biggest success. We've been in business a long time. And so we have a lot of relationships with the media. So we have that ability to cut right to the chase and get to somebody and suggest a theme or a story or a person or an organization, and also to find out what they're interested in and figure out who we can give them that will help solve their needs. So that's really important, the relationships. I talk about relationships all the time, but that is at the heart of every single thing that we do. So the relationships, the, our own credibility, that the media that we work with or the folks that are selecting speakers or giving awards know that we, um, we don't waste their time. We send things over the way they want to get it in a professional way. We don't bother, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be straight with clients. If they want us to pitch something that is not going to be a good pitch, we'll tell them that. We don't just say yes. And so the media trust us. And I think that's really important. And it's efficient because I have one person that I just spoke to on Friday. She's a producer at a TV station in Boston. And we went through a whole list of things that were happening with clients. She said, we should just do this once a month because it's just easier. We know how to get it done and present our clients professionally. I'm an authentic leader. I definitely wear my heart on my sleeve. I think anyone could tell you that. If I'm happy, you see it. If I'm crabby, you probably see it. I try not to be crabby in the office. Um, but you know, I try to lead by example. I think it's really important as a woman and as a mom for other women and men to know that I, you know, Wendy and I both as moms believe in having lives outside of the office. And we try to, we try to represent that. You know, I say, if I have to, if there's, you know, a crisis with my family or something, I'm not trying to pretend it's not happening. You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty open. And I think authenticity and transparency are kind of my hallmarks. Sometimes that might be a little too transparent, but I'd rather err that way. Um, and share, you know, what I think teams want to hear or know. Um, and I hope I'm a cheerleader. You know, I hope, I, I think that I'm very busy, so sometimes I might forget and, you know, and be imperfect. But I think, you know, in all, the teams know that they're appreciated and, um, and supported. So the best way to find me is usually text. <laughs> if you really need me urgently, but but probably um, the easiest way to cut through the clutter is just to go to the Castle Group's website, which is the Castle GRP, short for group, dot com, or to email me at slish, L-I-S-H, at the Castle GRP dot com. Um, and if you really want to reach me and it's urgent or a crisis, my office number is 617-337-9526, and it goes to my cell phone. <laughs>